You're watching Photographing the World 4 Behind the Scenes. If you'd like to learn more about the full tutorial, check out fstoppers.com slash store. So we're back near the border. Yeah. And uh, it's once again looking very similar to Italy. Um, so I've gotten some delicious pizza. That's pizza? Potentially. <laughs> After I ordered the pizza, they pulled out all the slices like they were too old. So let's see. As you can imagine, it was horrible. We had to keep driving into Chile, catch a flight to Santiago, hang out for two days while Elia taught a workshop, and then jump back on an airplane to head to the next location. Here we go again. Another day of transit. It's just another day in paradise. 5 a.m. I love this. I could do this every day. Once we arrived, we were excited to meet our new driver and we expected to be picked up in another large van. So this is our car. We are in trouble. But if we need to go underwater, we have a snorkel, so. I was really looking forward to uh, taking a nap, but. Dude, this has no suspension. Know, I don't know if we're even gonna get a seat. So tight in here, it's ridiculous. Oh you have to gosh. sit sideways. You have to sit like this. Maybe it's like two work. All right, I think we got this all figured out. Everybody is gonna be nice and cozy. Um, it, it's working out for the best, so. I think Patrick and I made the best decision. We're very comfortable in here. I can stretch my legs out. Start hitting the pump. He's all stretched well, out. I know my heart. Back there is yeah, better? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Once we arrived to the park, it became obvious why we needed a Land Rover. So this is our hotel. How many days are we here? How many nights? Four nights here. Let's get this. I guess this is the hot tub heated with a real fire. <laughs> this is so cool. This place definitely has the most character of anywhere I've ever been before. It feels like uh, Robinson Caruso or something. So Patrick just recently recovered from the last drive in being motion sick. Are you ready to get sick all over again? Here we go. <laughs> And then we started filming the next lesson. Hello everybody. We are still in Congiio National Park, which is the southern part of central Chile. This time of year, this area is known for these magnificent fall colors that you see all around us. It's also known for its many beautiful volcanoes. We are going to be using a 19 millimeter tilt shift lens on the Nikon D850. Just to do a little bit of a recap, this is three panels. So one, two, three. I've shot five exposure brackets for each panel. Now, truth be told, I probably only need one exposure for the bottom part of the foreground. I may need only one exposure for the middle ground. Back in post, Elia did something completely different. Now it's time to get a little creative and a little bit artistic. Let's add one more filter. This is actually really cool and perfect for this situation if you want to create something stylistic, and that's down here under creative. It's called sun rays, and we can move this around. 
and you actually get <laughs> light rays. Afterwards, our driver decided to share with us his favorite local drink. Then you have to pour on top of the stroke, right? Okay. Then goes completely directly until the bottom of the mate. All right. And now, as we say in Chile, you will have la primera chupada del mate. That means the first strong one. I, I it tastes like one. a bitter green tea. It's like if you mashed up green tea and jasmine tea together. Mm -hmm. One of the kind, right? Mm. And you're stoned. I'm about to run out to the wood fire hot tub and it's freezing. It's freezing in the room right now. It's definitely freezing outside. Here's what I'm worried about. How do they get the temperature right? I like the temperature in my hot tub like right on a degree. And when it's created by burning wood, I don't know how they're going to get it the right temperature. I'm afraid this is either going to be really cold or it's going to be really hot. Oh, I forgot my beer. It's so cold up here. Oh, it's warm. It is warm. This is like the perfect temperature. This is a better temperature than at the five-star resort we stayed at a couple of weeks ago. So this is very impressive. You can also smell the, the wood burning. <laughs> yeah, it smells great in here. <laughs> yeah. Our guide, he owns a hotel on the other side of the mountain. And he said he went on YouTube and looked up how to make a redneck hot tub. And so he learned how to build this just from YouTube videos. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. So we are literally inside of a wooden pot next to an oven that's in the water where we're putting more firewood in to cook ourselves. Cheers. 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 Salud. Salud. So Patrick, making a bit of a fashion statement today, huh? Here, hold, hold this bag. <laughs> Let's see. The match is pretty close. Pretty close. So on this trip, we've seen places that look like Lord of the Rings. I've seen places that look like Avatar. This place looks like Dr. Seuss. This is the strangest looking trees and moss on all of these trees. It looks like a cartoon land here. From everything our guide told us, this hike was not supposed to be difficult at all. This hike is wearing me out. It's feels great outside, the temperature's great. And it's not like super strenuous, but it's just always going uphill just a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, this hike is exhausting. I don't know why. I just feel like it's always at a 40 degree slope. It never lets up. We, we made it to a viewpoint, we, we haven't made, made it to the top. We made it to a good rest point. Oh gosh. So the hike that has been so hard for me these 20 school children did it no problem. Spin it over your head like a baton. Exercise? Yeah. Gosh. It strengthens the core. Can you tell that we have nothing to do? So, Alaya has gone up the mountain to another location to see if that's the uh, angle that he wants. I'm pretty sure that it's not the angle. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stand here and wait for like 30 minutes? and then I will catch him on the way back down and we'll meet in the middle and I think that's where the actual shot is. All right, Elia never showed up. So we're walking all the way back up and I am very tired. So this trail is kicking my ass. I am like, I'm worn out and uh, it's not that hard of a hike. I don't really have a good excuse. We've been passed by like a group of school children. I left Lee and he put his backpack down, he's taking a break down there. And we have no idea if potentially we walked past Elia in our group, 
or if the group is just further ahead. If it's starting to get dark, I can see the mountain, which means there might be a photograph being taken right now. All right, it's now 5.48, sunset's right around seven. We're definitely running out of time now. And this is probably gonna be the last lesson of the tutorial, so uh, let's shape up. <clears throat> I'm just gonna pretend there's pizza at the end of this trail here. I literally almost just left this camera sitting here. That would have been bad. Please be close. It's like I'm on the freaking top of this mountain. Can't go any further. It's just sky up here. Lee! Nothing. <laughs> All right, I found Patrick thanks to his pigeon call. Where the hell are they? All right, so we have lost our whole group and we keep hiking the trail that never ends. And at some point, we're, we risk the chance of going past them. So what is your solution to this problem? So my laziness came up with the idea. I'm gonna put this drone up. I'm gonna go see if I can find them with this. Then, Isn't that gonna be like finding a needle in a haystack? It's better than walking. Dude, if that volcano just started erupting behind you, that would be pretty sick. Yeah, I think we could just make it do that. Again. That would be the best footage I've ever shot. Here we go. All I see is a trail that goes forever. <laughs> well, at least are you getting epic footage? No. No. I think we're gonna walk one more mile up the mountain. And if we don't see them in like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, we gotta turn around, like we must have passed them. So Patrick literally walked right by it. I was about to walk by it. Here we go, Lee and Pat to the end. Fuck. F my life. That means we still have like a third of this whole hike to do. Now I'm feeling kind of dumb because watch this potentially be like Elias' favorite shot ever. We're not gonna get up there in time before sunset to film anything. And then I'm gonna look like the dumbass who wasn't doing his job right. Look at this, F-stoppers, Pat, arrows, Lee, F-stoppers, arrows. I'm so glad I was looking at my feet. Let's find them. Hey! It you didn't trust found. us? What do you mean? Yeah, I was... Luckily, we arrived with just enough time to knock out this lesson. Hello everybody, we are still in Kongiyo National Park and for the past, I'd say, three hours, we have been hiking up the Sierra Nevada Range. It's a beautiful trail. I think we've been about six kilometers in now, very close to the end of the trail and along the way, there were many beautiful vantage points. So all along the hike, I used my Nikon D850 with the 28 to 300 just to kind of hand hold and scout the locations and here's what I came up with along the way. I have to admit, there are a lot of really beautiful locations, but I felt I wanted to get further and further up so I could basically look more in alignment with the volcano itself. So right here is like the edge of the cliff. It is, Patrick. And I put the camera here, but in order to stabilize it on this little tripod, I have these little rocks. So I think it's balanced without the rocks, but the rocks are just extra insurance that this camera doesn't go way off the edge into the abyss. What really makes this shot special are these beautiful trees. These are the Araucaria trees, and they're very particular to this area, and some of them are hundreds of years old, if not a thousand years old, and they look prehistoric. This entire place is like being in Jurassic Park. Back in post, Aliyah put the finishing touches on this image and wrapped up the entire tutorial. Make this full screen. Let's go ahead and start all over take a look where we started here. This is the original RAW. As you can see, it's, well, doesn't look good at all. We edited the RAW, we brought that mountain back in, 
and then we color corrected that mountain around it so it matched the sky, cleaned it up a little bit, camera raw filter and some color corrections, and we went from here, straight out of camera, to here with the crop. That wraps up this lesson and the final lesson in photographing the world for Thanks so much for watching all of these tutorials, and I hope to see you guys out there shooting in some of these beautiful destinations all over the planet. And please, when you capture images, definitely share them with the group so we can all enjoy them. All right, we wrapped up the lesson. See this dot of light down here? That is where our car is. Never been more excited to see a car in my life. Are you going to miss us, Lava? All right, buddy, gotta go. That wraps up another Photographing the World. We've had an amazing experience together in North and South America. And honestly, it's been a wild ride with crazy weather, difficult shooting conditions, and of course, really strong winds. But from the bottom of my heart, I wanna thank you guys for joining us on this adventure, watching this tutorial, and of course, for the continued support throughout the creation of these Photographing the World series. Thank you so much for watching Photographing the World 4 Behind the Scenes. If you'd like to learn more about the full tutorial and potentially purchase it, head over to fstoppers.com store.